Hey guys, so I'm back with Tell Me Why and um, figuring out the puzzle room. Um, I'm sure I forgot, I've not got my headphones in, I'm just faffing around with them. Uh, yeah, so we're in the, the attic of the barn um, and it looks really, really cool. Um, Marianne's decorated it, the twins have never seen it before. And we've got all these like stories out of the Book of Goblins that we have to, there's like, they're all puzzles that we have to solve. So uh, this is the story of uh, somebody defeating the Mad Hunter or something. Uh, so maybe this oh, one? Here it is. The Goblins and the Mad Hunter. Why do you think she changed the picture? I don't know. Maybe it's a message. Like, the differences between the two mean something. Hmm. So something should we read about it? Marianne, right? Since she's the princess? Yeah. Why don't we try to find them all and then see if it makes any sense? Okay, so let's read it. <clears throat> I don't quite understand what we're doing, but... Um, the goblins trick the mad hunter. Once upon a time, in a castle just beyond the ancient and deep forest, the mad hunter was punished by the gold lady for failing to return with the wise princess. For your failure, said the gold lady, I will take your left hand. You will return to the ancient and deep forest and hunt for the wise princess. And if you can bring her back, I will return your hand to you. Fail again, and I will take your right hand. The mad hunter could hunt with... <clears throat> Excuse me, the mad hunter could hunt with just his right hand, but if he lost both his hands, he would never be able to hunt again. I would no longer be a mad hunter, but only a mad man. So the mad hunter returned to the ancient and deep forest, searching with his piercing eye for the wise princess. The crafty goblins were out searching for mischief when they saw the mad hunter on the prowl. We cannot let him find the princess, said the goblins, and so they devised a plan. It was wash day, and the princess had hung her beautiful gown out to dry. They stole it from the line and stuffed it full of straw, and then returned it to where the mad hunter was scouring the paths of the forest. As the mad hunter turned down a path that would have led him to the big wooden house, the goblins danced the, st danced the straw princess in and out of view in the opposite direction. The ruse worked. The hunter fixed his piercing eye on them and followed. Through the day and into the night, they led him away from the true princess. As night fell, the crafty goblins realised the error in their plan. The mad hunter was now hunting them. If he caught them, he would not be kind. So they put their heads together to come up with a plan. It did not take them long to realise where they should go. They led the mad hunter to the edge of the deep and icy lake, where he came into view. When he came into view, they weighted the fake princess down with stones and dropped her into the frigid water. Oh, it's like she predicted her own death, that's gross. Careful not to plunge into the depths themselves, lest the moon hag take her revenge on them. The mad hunter removed his clothing and dove in after the fake princess. He followed the shape of the sinking princess deep into the chilly water, down below where ice covered the lake's surface. Finally, he caught her. But when he spun her towards him, he realised that she had no head and that her body was stuffed with straw. And then he felt a slippery fin brush his shoulder as the moon hag loomed overhead. The next morning, the princess went to receive her gown from the clothing line and found that it was gone. She immediately suspected the goblins of mischief and called, Goblins, did you take my gown? The goblins emerged from their cave and nodded sadly. Now what will I wear? asked the princess, sad and angry that she had lost her only dress. Let us explain, said the goblins. So they told the princess the story of the mad hunter, and then they produced his clothing, which was a bit large for the princess, but much warmer than her beautiful gown. She immediately forgave them. Thank you, my friends, she said, for rescuing me and for this clothing, which will keep me much warmer in the winter than my beautiful gown. The mad hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the moon hag, but she did not kill him because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted the day he would emerge to once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the mad hunter. Okay. So what do we need to do here? So, okay, let's go. Okay, spot the differences. Um, it moves. Oh, 
Some of these parts are buttons. Hmm. Maybe that branch looks a little bit different? I don't know. The princess is running away from the Mad Hunter. Who was sent by the Gold Lady, according to the story. Do you think the Gold Lady could have been Marianne's mom? I mean, she always used to say she moved to the end of the world to get away from her family. Huh. Yeah, you're right. She ran away. Just like the princess is here. Right, so it's spot the Wait. difference. Even if the branch is a little different. Right, I don't so. really think that means anything. Right, let's have a quick look. So, he's smiling. Uh, I think the branch is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's the same. She's different. She's not there in the picture. That little tree's different. Um, that that is the same. So the hands different. The hands facing the Mad Hunter down. Still has two hands here. So this was either before the gold lady cut off his other one, or after he earned it back. Which either makes it before most of the stories, or after. Wow. Yeah, at some point when she was running away from whatever the hell the Mad Hunter meant to Marianne. Or not. I don't know. They're the same. Castle, the castle's different. Why do you think she added that castle in the background? See the color of the flag? It could be her mother's castle. It looks like the princess is running away from it. So, Marianne ran away from home. And she grew up kinda rich? <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, the story's taking a bit of a different turn. So there's two lights in the sky, that looks right. Right, I think everything's right there now, right? So, do we press the middle? Does his smile look different to you? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. Uh, so I think that's all of them. I think that's the same, that's the same, that's different, that's different, that's different, that's the same. They're the same, that's different. Figured anything out yet? I think that's it. Is it meant to do something? Still figuring it out. Nah, still figuring it out. It's not the same title, so I guess that counts as a difference. That's it. Whoa. Yay, we What's did it? it! Pictures, letters... Have you ever seen any of these? All the pictures of Marianne I've ever seen were the ones hanging on the walls. It's so cool. I can't believe she was a ballet dancer. Marianne. And a good one, too. God, that's so not her. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Why would she keep an old drawing of a pet in here? Because she loved it? Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of her that young. I think that's her mom in the background. So she had like a really strict mom. The gold a lady. Pushy mom. That was definitely her mom. So We've got another did figure. Did Marianne grow up kind of rich? Maybe. Would have been nice to have some of that. <laughs> well, she didn't seem happy with it, did she? Did you know she studied engineering? No. But it looks like she changed her major to visual arts. I don't think she actually got it changed. The paper's not signed and it's all wrinkled. Like someone tried to throw it away. Oh, so she wanted to change it. Oh. Yeah, it sounds like she had a pushy mum who didn't let her do what she wanted to do, right? Marianne, I can't do this anymore. You deserve better than cliché bull poop. Like, it's not you, it's me. But the truth is, it's all just been too much to deal with, and I've realised I'm not ready. Maybe if we could have dealt with all this on our own, without your mum constant, constantly putting pressure on us, things could have been different. But the damage is done, and it's probably too late for that now. You seem like a dick, Brent. I'm so sorry. You're an amazing person. Uh, 
and you made me a better man. I hate myself for doing this, but I feel like we'd both be better off apart. There I go with the cliches again. Please don't ever stop being who you are. Here, but I'm gone, Brent. Here, but I'm gone. Yeah, great. Thanks, Brent. Uh, I hope he's not the dad. Could this guy have been any more cryptic? You think the guy with her is Brent? From the letter? I would guess so. <laughs> well, I would have been over him like a shot, Tyler, I think. Tyler, see that little light? Jerk. I think we need to solve this one next. Which one? I'm glad you know, Alison. Thank you for directing me here. Right, so. The cruel parents kept her locked away in their rust rusty, musty palace. There's the gold lady again. She's all over the board. There was a figure of her in that stash by the Mad Hunter painting, right? Oh, yeah. So maybe all of this is related to what we found in there. Okay. Uh... Well, she had to do ballet, so it's that one. Hey, I can move the piece next to the gold lady. All these pictures. They look like images from Marianne's life before Delos, yeah, don't they? Because that's well, her some of them do the anyway. Ballet. Maybe that's it then. We need to figure out which ones are real. Right, so... What's this one? So, scales, money... Medicine, engineering. She made her do engineering. The wise princess looks like she's trying to run away. And she's being watched by the gold lady. Hmm. Uh, Cause that's like law, right? Like um, finance, medicine, engineering. She studied engineering. Um, um, so she didn't let her do art, which hmm. is what she wanted to What's do. What's the gold so. lady doing? Whispering something into someone's ear behind the princess's back? Oh, she had a bird. Is the gold lady? Is that it? It's opening. We did it. Big What's brain in time. There this time. Okay. So, a cabin. Maybe that's their cabin that they're in now. Well, they're in the garage, but you know. Is that Carol? Yeah, and Sam. Look at him. He's so young and happy. Hmm. Well. Well. Wow. She worked for a watchmaker in Juno before she moved to Delos. No wonder she was so handy. That's pretty cool. She was a watchmaker. Here is my Dallas Crossing pal's number. Let him know you were interested in the house he's selling, Tammy. Oh, so that's how she found the house. Who sold the house? Did Sam tell, sell the house? What? Salmonberry Park, Kodiak Island. Salmonberry Park? Huh. Is that some kind of commune? Looks like it. So weird to imagine her living in a community like that. With, you know, <laughs> other people. The weirdest part is how they all seem to love her. Where was prom Queen Mary Ann when the whole town was turning on us? Aww. From the good people of Salmonberry Park, Kodiak Island, June 1992. Don't be a stranger. Keep on looking for those answers to the questions in your head to which you're blind. Smelly, smiley face. I think it's a sm smelly face. Shelley. We miss you already, Solon Bronwyn. Sorry we're losing you to modern civilization. We'll miss your positive attitude and your adventurous spirit. Also, your wild edibles picking skills. Haha. <laughs> Pretty Marcus. Bon voyage, Marianne Rick. Uh, so that's probably what she called him, right? Pretty Marcus. It's a bit weird to call it yourself unless somebody calls that to you. Um, Marianne, you had the warmest, most beautiful aura, and I know you'll keep on shining whenever you land. Peace and blessings, Jurita. Thanks for being our little ray of sunshine. Well, the tears are starting again, guys. It, it's clearly she was a very sunshiny person, and she had a big impact on people that she met who loved how positive and vibrant she was. And it's really sad that the twins don't have those memories of her, like of their own mum. They can only see that side of her through other people's eyes. Um, 
because they had quite a dark impression of her. Godspeed, Captain Wati. I like your pictures. Love, Kamala. Okay, thanks, Kamala. <laughs> I'm terrible at cards. Whenever I have to fill in cards, even if I really like the person and think a lot of them, uh, like having that pressure to like say something meaningful, it, I'm, I'm so rubbish at it. Um, Marianne, uh, 1996, so that's quite a bit later than the commune. I hope this letter finds you, but since you didn't really leave any contact information, I'll have to send it to your aunt and hope for the best. I'm Excuse me. I'm writing to inform you that your mother has passed away last week. We just had a funeral reception. The house has been filled with people all day. Friends, family, colleagues and church members. It's now 11pm and I'm sitting all alone at the kitchen table surrounded by dozens of trays of food, flowers and sympathy cards. Your cousin A.D. brought in a most beautiful photo album full of our holiday pictures in La Cana. You're there in all of them, but you weren't here today. We haven't heard from you in four years and we can only hope you made it to Alaska or wherever you are and that you and your, your child, singular, are both safe. So they knew she was pregnant but they didn't know, didn't know that she had twins. Your mother has been sick and depressed for years and you can imagine why. Oh, guilt trip. The pain of being shunned by her own daughter, knowing she would never get to see her grandchild grow up. It spread through her body like cancer and consumed her completely. All the suffering, suffering simply because you ran away like a temperamental little girl instead of accepting her help when you got pregnant out of wedlock after dropping out of college and without a penny to your name. She only stepped up to help because she knew you weren't ready to raise a child properly. It's all the judgment and control. Like, it's really controlling and judgmental. It's like trying to help, but they're not trying to help. They're trying to control. There's a difference. Uh, a mother's duty doesn't end when her children leave home. Now that you're a mother yourself, I hope you will begin to understand that good parenting isn't about coddling children. It's about providing for them and shaping them into the people they're supposed to become, whether they like it or not. Oh, horrible attitude. Shitty, shitty parents. I'm glad she ran away. I won't trouble you again. You've made your intentions clear. I just thought you should know. She's better off without them if that's their attitude. Dad. Stinky, stinky bad attitude dad i mean he might just not know how to express himself properly right what the but hell? that is not marianne was pregnant in 1992 before she even got here before us yeah i thought she'd lost a baby I, I, do we have a long lost sibling out there somewhere it's yeah, possible but maybe aborted or lost she could have given it up or miscarried because that's why she was just so emotional yeah, about it right you're right we picked up on that in the an earlier episode do you think we could track down her father you mean the grandfather she never told us about? Do you really want, want to? He seems like a bit of a jerk. You're not at all excited about having more family. You saw the letter. I don't think we want any part of that. Fine. Let's keep digging. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's good to know. It's good to meet people. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have them in your life. Um, you know, it might give them a sense of closure as well. You know, they might have learned the lesson. This in just that time. lit up, so I think we're supposed to try this one next. What's this? Hmm. Some sort of map? I'm really enjoying this, by the way. One day she took a tiara and ran away to the forest. So is this. It's not getting me to open the Book of Goblins. What's that plant thing on top? Oh. Those are definitely salmonberry flowers. Hey, that degree in outdoor studies is paying off. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. Wait, right, hang on. So I think she starts at the castle. That's the gold lady's castle. Then what's the next choice? So it's either the time the party, the salmon berries, the cabin. Oh, that, I've got to try and get this in the right order, haven't I? Um, What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those are definitely salmon berry flowers. Hey, that degree in outdoor study. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. Some sort of clock? I'm thinking because she ended up eventually at the house, right? This is the princess's name, it. Why is nothing happening? Uh, so maybe... Uh, 
Maybe it's some this sort way of around? clock. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear. This is the princesses. Come on. I don't know what I'm meant to be doing here. I sort of feel like I've missed something. Um, so maybe she goes from the castle. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. Uh, Some sort of clock? What's that plant thing on top? This is the princesses. Come on. I don't know what to do here. Some sort of clock? Like, this is where she starts right, and this is where she ends up. So it's just getting these right in there. That's the gold lady's castle. Right, What's let's that try. Plant thing on top. Oh, those are definitely salmonberry flowers. Hey, that degree in outdoors. This is the princess's house. Oh no. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. What's that plant thing on? Some sort of clock? This is the princesses. Come on. No. Um. Some sort of clock? What's that plant thing on top? This is the princesses. Come on. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, guys. You <laughs> I need, need help. help? Yes, I yeah, need help. Yeah, I'm stuck. Any ideas? Hmm. A clock. What do you think this is about? She had that watchmaking job in Juno, oh. right? So that was probably right before she moved to Delos. Right. Okay. So... This is the princess's house. Right, that one's before that one. Right, okay. You need help? Yeah, I'm stuck. Any ideas? The flowers. Tell me about the flowers. What do you think What's they are? What's up with the salmonberry flowers? I think those probably represent the commune she stayed uh, at after she moved out. Okay. You need help? Yeah, I'm stuck. Any ideas? The dinner party. What's the deal with this picture of the princess eating dinner with her animal buddies? Well, the beaver is Eddie's mother and the bear is Sam. And we know she met Sam and Carol after she moved to Delos. Right. So... So... So she went from the castle to the... What's that plant thing on top? Oh, those to are definitely salmonberry flowers. Then she got the Some job. Sort of clock. Then she met this them. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and, then and she this got is the, the princesses. Come on. No, I'm still not you getting You need help? It. Yeah, yeah I'm stuck. Help. Any ideas? Can you just do it for me, please, Ali? That's our house in the top right corner, isn't it? Yeah. Hold on. When did she buy the house again? Why don't we go back and check the dates? Okay, fine. <sighs> this one's uh, hurting my head a little wow. bit. Wow. She so... worked for a watchmaker in Juno before she moved to Delos. No wonder she was so handy. So, October 1992. Salmonberry Park. Huh. June. Is that some kind of commune? Looks like it. Right, so... so weird to imagine her living in a community like that. You so, know, that was before people. the watchmaking. The weirdest part is how they all seem to love her. Is that Carol? Yeah, and Sam. Look at him. He's so young and happy. Both of her parents kind of sound like jerks. I would have run away too. Oh it's, the, oh, it's American dates, isn't it? 
Oh, I can't do this. It's, oh, it's confusing me. So, yeah, I'm really confused by this one. So maybe, maybe she. Can I do it? Right. So maybe. Sorry, tell me rumbling. So she went from the house to the commune to the watchmaker. Some sort of clock. To the this cabin. This is the princess's house. And then she this met Sam. This looks like a dinner party with the old bear and the very old beaver. Yay! Yes. Oh dear, that hurt What's my head. <laughs> Another letter? The princess. I'm enjoying this though. Is this from the Book of Goblins? Not that I know of. Well, sure looks like it could be. Uh, this one's gonna break my heart, isn't it? Right, I'm gonna get comfy. I'm gonna get comfy. Ugh. Are we ready for this? The princess's loss. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a w big wooden house. She had made it through the woods and t to that house with nothing left but the clothes on her back and a single item from her old life, a splendid tiara. Excuse me. She lost almost everything in her desperate flight from the Mad Hunter. The trees tore the rucksack from her back and shredded her dress and left a pattern of red welts on her skin, but through it all she clutched the tiara close to her chest, fearing any misstep could cause it to fall from her arms and break. Is that the prom queen tiara? The tiara had its own spot in the big wooden house, a pillow near the window where the sun would catch on its surface to shine and wink. The princess would stare for hours at the, ti the tiara, marvelling at its beauty and running her thumb down its curves. Every morning she would wake and she would tend to it, polishing its every surface to be sure it shone as brightly as it possibly could. Then she would pluck it up and place it on her head and walk the woods, feeling somehow more complete. Because what, after all, was a princess without a crown? Every night she would place it on, upon its pillow, give it a quick kiss and go to bed. On her way she would pause and glance back to make sure it was still there. She hated to be separated from it, but she knew it was safest on the pillow while she slept. So, I wonder why that means so much to her. It must be more than it simply being like pretty. It must like, it must, I don't know. There must be emotional value to it as well, I think. One night the princess woke to a raging storm. The wind howled against the walls, rattling the window in their panes. Fearing a gust might burst open a window and blow the tiara to the ground, she plucked it from its pillow and brought it to bed with her. All through the night she held the tiara close, and in the morning she woke to find herself still cradling it. The storm had passed, and the princess relaxed. That day was the same as any other, though perhaps she gave the tiara an even more thorough cleaning, grateful as she was that nothing had gone wrong. That night she placed the tiara upon its pillow, gave it a quick kiss and went to bed, pausing on her way to be sure it was still there. In the morning she woke and sensed immediately that there was something wrong. In the living room the tiara lay upon the ground, broken, dull and faded. Nothing else in the room had changed. The pillow was exactly where she had left it. The window was closed. There had been no storm, no wind, no sign of that anything at all could have gone amiss. Only the broken tiara, mute upon the ground. She picked it up and held it in her arms with a guttural cry, but though she tried to fix it and to polish it, it was gone, beyond repair and with no shine left. So is this tiara symbolic of something else? The princess held the tiara through, through the day and through the next night, sitting in the same spot at the window where she used to polish it. When the sun rose, she looked outside and her gaze fixed on a sapling. She remembered how the sapling had survived the winter, clinging to life despite the frozen, unforgiving earth. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling, and as the final scoop of the dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone, and with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a one woman, alone, in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure and her title. Okay. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. 
and her title. That was the story she read us that night. God, it makes sense now. I'm just putting yeah. a, 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 um, she got pregnant. a top on. I'm a bit cold. I have got a top on. I'm putting another top on. <laughs> and she ran away to start a new life. And then she made her way to Delos Crossing. Where she was It's nice. It's happy. a nice way of discovering more about the mum and kind of what went on in her life. But then the baby died. The, bit, the tiara was the baby, yeah. I was thinking maybe. I wonder if that's what it is. I wonder if the tiara is the baby. I can't even imagine how she must have felt. She left everything behind, built a whole new life for him. And then, he was just gone. I guess having us helps her move on. But when it looked like we were going to be taken away, she snapped. Oh, Paul. She just so couldn't lose any more children. It really wasn't anything we did. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all this. I don't either, but... All I wanted was to understand what happened to her. And now I do. Yeah. But we still haven't seen what's in that chest. Okay, so how do we open it? All right, are we opening it? Yeah, powering, powering through. Can I uh, put that other sculpture? Yes. Gold lady stays locked up in her castle. There we go. Oh, I would be happy if I got them, got them all. It looks like there's a few more to get though. Uh, I might leave it there actually. I might call it there for an episode. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with you again soon. Uh, so thank you again for spending this time with me. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Um, I'm really enjoying learning more about Marianne and kind of what happened to her and her backstory. I still feel like we've probably got quite a lot more to discover. Um, so yeah, we'll explore that together in the next episode. Bye bye guys.